Hi, I'm Sarah Claussen, and I'm the product manager for the Congo family of lighting control products. This video includes a description of some of the new features coming in Congo version 6.3. Version 6.3 is an exciting version in many ways. We've been working a lot on the user interface to make it more intuitive, to give you a tool for managing sequences better on the main playback, and to give you an easy and flexible organizational tool that you can also use for importing data from other show files. Many users have told us that they chose Congo because it has a simple and intuitive user interface. Once you've understood the basic structure of our commands, it's pretty easy and fun to guess the commands. One example of this is the way that the record key always works in combination with other keys. Record by itself records a preset. Record plus the group key records a group. Record and the focus key will record a focus palette, and so on. It's fast, it's logical, and it's simple, but you have to start off knowing that the record key is the one you need to start with. So if you don't know that information, it can seem a little intimidating at the beginning. We have a help system where you can press the question mark button in any other key and get a short description of that key. But what we've really wanted to do in this version is really open up the command structure of the system. And the way that we've done that is by implementing what are known as context menus. Context menus appear on the graphic display, and they appear in context of where you're working. So for example, I've just opened up a context menu on the presets node in the browser, and it gives me commands that I can use within that context, like expand, which expands that node. If I open up that context menu again, now because the node is already expanded, I can compress it. So these are, of course, functions that you can do with commands on the keypad, but we tried to make it easier for you to find those commands without having to learn all of the shortcuts in the Congo system. The way that you can open these context menus is to simply use the select key on the face panel of the console. Pressing it twice on a focused item opens up that menu. I can then arrow down through the menu and press modify to perform that command. Hitting select again twice opens up the context menu again, and I can perform that function. If I'm in live, for example, and I go to a channel format, if I press select twice here, I get a different context menu. And these are commands that are related to selected channels. You'll find that context menus now appear in all sorts of places in the software. Some of them are accessible using this double tap select function. Another way to get to them is to use a mouse. So if I'm here in the live view with my mouse and I hit my right click, I get that same menu. And now I can use the mouse to pick a function. Clicking outside the menu gets rid of it. So if I select these two lights, for example, one and four, I right click. I can set those lights to 100%. I can right click. I can record these lights as a group. And I can do all of these things now directly on screen using a pointing device. This is really helpful when you're working offline or if you're working on a PC client with your Congo system. Another new tool that we've developed in this version, you can also get to through a context menu or you can get to through the sequence list editor. And that's a concept called a sequence section marker. And a section marker is simply a flag that you place on a step within a sequence. So if I'm over here in the main playback tab, and for example, I right click on step three, you'll notice one of the options here is called section marker. If I click on that, you'll notice that this step now is displayed with a blue highlight on it. And then there's this nice, really obvious oval that's around the text on that step. That's really all this is, is it's an indicator of a section of the sequence on the main playback. And it's a great visual cue for the beginning of a song or the beginning of a scene, any place that you want to have an indication that this is an important part of my show. One of the other advantages of this tool is that you can jump to these section markers by very easily placing them on the direct select. So any place where you have a section marker in your main sequence, 
If section markers are on your direct selects, you'll get a button that corresponds to that marker. And the text of that step will be indicated on the direct select. Very simply stated, if you need to jump from one song to another or one scene to another in a rehearsal, you can just go to the direct select, hit that button, and it will jump the sequence directly into that step. It's like using go to without having to know what the preset number or the step number is. So it's very quick, very easy to jump around in your main list using that tool. If I want to get rid of a section marker, again, very simply, I can use my context menu and just click that command again, and it removes the section marker from that step. Another new tool that we've developed in this version makes it easier to manipulate the show data in your current play, but it's also very useful when importing data from another play. That could be a backup version of your play. It could be another play entirely. However you want to manage your data, basically, this opens up the concept of the browser into a tab view and gives you a lot of tools for copying and moving and viewing data of your entire show file all in one tab. So if I go into the browser, under Main Show Data, you'll notice I have two new options called Organizer, one tab or two. I'll start very simply by opening the single tab version. And you'll see that it opens up a tab that looks like our channel view tabs at the top half. And it looks a lot like the main show data section of the browser on the bottom half. And inside the organizer, I can use arrows or I can use the mouse to navigate. So if I open up the presets node, for example, I can see all the presets in my current play. If I arrow down or I click on a preset and open that node up, I'll get even more information. So right now you can see that this preset 103 has two channels in it, 11 and 14. They're both at 50%. I happen to know they're also both Mac 300s. Down in the bottom half of my screen, you can see that 103 has information for two devices. If I open up that node, same way I open up in the browser using the right arrow, I get more information. I see two channels have intensity, and there are two devices with attributes recorded. If I open that up, I can see that those two devices are both Mac 300 mode 4. And if I open that node up, I see that they're channels 11 and 14 and you'll notice as I go from one channel to the next, the selection in the top half of the screen changes. And if I open that node up, now I can delve even deeper into channel 14, all the way down to what's recorded for pan on channel 14 in preset 103, which is great. But the really cool thing here is I can actually use this organizer tab to move information around. So for example, if I said that these channels, 11 and 14, actually should be in preset 102 instead. What I can do here is I can simply click and drag on the devices and drop them into preset 102. And at this point, I can choose whether I'm making a copy of the information. In other words, I want to leave the data in 103 and copy it into 102. Or do I want to move the information out of preset 103 and place it into 102? So if I hit move, You'll now notice that preset 102 shows that it has two devices, and preset 103 only has intensity information. So you can use the organizer to drag and drop information from one preset to another. You can drag and drop steps within sequences. You can drag and drop information into recorded targets. It's a very, very, very quick and easy way to manipulate the data of your show in a very graphic and a very direct manner. If I close that organizer, I can actually open up the organizer with two tabs. And what this does is it's literally two views into this current show file. And that allows me to have one tab focused on one part of the show, for example, sequence two, and another tab focused on a different part of the show file, let's say sequence six. I can use my select key and my arrow keys, or if I'm using a keyboard and mouse, I can use the shift key, just like I would to multi-select cells in Excel, for example, to select multiple steps. I can then drag those four steps over into sequence six. And again, I'm given the option of copying the information or moving the information. I'll choose copy this time. 
And now you can see sequence two still has all of those steps in it, have, nothing's changed. But over here on this side where I'm looking at sequence six, I can see that now those steps have been added in to my sequence. So it just becomes a much more graphical and obvious way to manipulate data if that's what you need to do in your particular show file. Using this two-tab method, I can also import data from another show file. So in this case, I'm actually going to start from an empty show, just so it's very clear what's happening. And I'm going to import from a show on my hard drive. So we'll go down here to Demo Theater. And now when I choose Import From, I don't get the wizard that we had before. I get two organizer tabs. One tab is shown with a blue bar on it, like we show in Blind. This tells you that that's the Import From side. That's the show file that's on the hard drive. And you can see here at the top of the bottom half of the tab that it's on the Play Archive in the Demo Plays folder, and it's called DemoTheater.asc. The other tab is the Play in Memory. In other words, the new show file I just created that's completely empty. And so if I go over here now to Presets and say I want to bring in Preset 103 from the hard drive into my current empty play, I can copy that information in. And what's new is that copying a preset in using import, you used to have to know that you needed the patch and the definition of the fixtures and then all the palettes and all the preset information in order to get a sequence in that made any sense. In version 6.3, we've improved this. And so what this dialog is showing you is that by simply dragging preset 103 from that demo play into this new play, all of these items, a color palette, device patch, focus palettes, and a template for my Mac 300s have all been brought into my current show file. So all the dependencies are managed for me, which is a great help when I'm trying to bring information from, for instance, a default show file into a new show file. I want to get all that patch information and all those palettes automatically without having to do all of that importing manually. So import is greatly improved in this version as well. So you saw me doing some drag and drop work in the organizer tabs, and I've just reopened the demo show file so I have some show data again. And there are other places where I can do drag and drop editing in this version. One of those places is in the main playback tab. So if I'm focused on that tab, basically without having to go into the organizer or into the sequence list, although it works in both of those places as well, I can just click on the playback tab and drag and drop steps of my sequence. And the dialog will tell me that I'm dragging preset 105 and I'm dropping it on preset 102. And again, I can choose whether or not I want to make a copy of this step or if I want to move this step. And you'll notice up at the top here we have an advanced tab. In this tab, I can choose even more advanced functions like where should the new step go? So here's a drop down menu that says I want that preset 105 that I've dropped on preset 102 to be inserted before the target. I want it to replace the target or I want it after the target. So I get to choose that destination using this particular tab. So if I say before the target step and click copy, you'll notice that I now have a new step two with preset 105. It's a copy of this one here with all of the information, including the text and the times and anything else that's associated with that particular step. And it's dropped in here before preset 102, which is my blackout. So I can do all that drag and drop editing right here inside the main playback tab. I can also use context menus. So for example, if I right click on preset 101, I get the option to open that preset either in the traditional editor or in the organizer. I can go to that step or I can place that step in the B field, ready for me to press go. Or I can apply that section marker if I want. I can also double click on items inside the playback view. So for instance, double clicking on a device number on a step will open up the preset attribute editor for that particular view. If I double click on timing, I get the time editor for that step. So the playback tab is no longer simply a display of information. It becomes a little more interactive by 
using a mouse to click or right click on various parts of the screen. Other things I can do with drag and drop, or rather with context menus and drag and drop, is I can manage docs. So if I'm over here on this screen with my live tab, and I want to open up a doc view, I could press setup and browser, which is the keyboard shortcut for that. That's, that hasn't changed. Or I can right click down in the doc area where I want to assign that doc, and then just pick the type of doc I want to assign and click on that. And now you'll notice that I have a master's doc at the bottom of the screen, which is awesomely cool because one of the drag and drop things we can do now is I can move data from one master to another by simply clicking and dragging on it. So I'll do that again. I'm clicking and holding on master five and I'm dropping on master seven. And you'll notice that preset 801 is moving around on my master page. So that's kind of fun. I can also select channels. I can use my right click to set a level. I can drag those channels onto a master. And so now those channels at those levels are assigned to master seven. So these are just a couple of the things that you can do by dragging and dropping in this version of software. So everything I just described is of course in the new online help system. And you can get into that help system by just pressing the question mark button on your console. And if you want to find all the places in the help system where we've made a change in this version, you can press the text button on your console and type in the version number, 6.3, and hit the modify key. And that will search the help system and give you a list of results showing every part of the help system where we've made a change or an adjustment based on a new feature or a changed feature in this version of software. All of the features that I just described are very shortly described with links to the part of the help system that describes them in detail in a section called this software version 6.3. So I invite you to go and find out a little bit more about all the new stuff we've put in and I hope you enjoy your time using this new software. Thank you.